What's up, Locked On Cardinals fans? Happy Monday. Albert Pujols is back in St. Louis on a one-year $2.5 million deal. And I know that I'm on spring break and traveling, but we're still talking about it. Didn't bring my video equipment, though, so if you're watching this on YouTube, it's going to be this intro, the Locked On Cardinals intro, and then just the audio of me talking about Albert Pujols. Didn't want to leave you guys out. Still wanted to get something out on YouTube. So stay tuned for a great episode of Locked On Cardinals talking about the machine returning to St. Louis. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It is Monday, March the 28th of 2022, and the machine is back. That's what today's episode is all about. My name is Lucas Smith, host of the show. Thanks for tuning in on this lovely Monday that got a little bit lovelier with the news of Albert returning to St. Louis. We got a lot to break down today. Uh, For those of you who haven't been listening last couple days or weeks or so, uh, I am on spring break right now, uh, going down to Nashville in a little bit with my friends. But I brought my microphone just in case something like this were to happen. So if you're watching on YouTube... You're not going to see my face except for the beginning, explaining it. So I was going to have a nice little episode with Jeff Carr out today, but no. We are talking the machine as he is returning to St. Louis, according to multiple sources. Katie Wood, Derek Gold, the first to majorly report it, as well as Bob Nightingale, John Heyman, Mark Feisnan coming in with a salary reporting of $2.5 million. So we are going to talk about Albert being back. Positives, negatives. Does this make baseball sense? Is he blocking anybody? Does that really matter? We're talking all that today on this wonderful episode of Locked on Cardinals. Thanks for making it your first listen of the day, especially when breaking news happens. And this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online as you cover this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. Wow. Part of me still can't believe it. Still cannot believe that Albert Pujols will be wearing the Cardinal Red once again. It was a, it was a dream, in all honesty, that, that it was going to happen. Did not expect it. It was a move that could have been nice. Does it make sense? Does it not make sense? I was focused way too much you know, on, on the baseball sense of things. I even said, I believe an exact quote on this show was, does this make baseball sense to improve the team to become a World Series contender? Probably not. Or quote something to that effect. And while that sentiment still may be true, it still might be, that this move in and of itself does not make the Cardinals a World Series team. And I'm, you know, we'll talk about that a little bit in segment two in terms of the baseball sense, but if if you're a fan of the game, and even if not, if if you're, yeah, I was going to say, if you're a fan of the Cardinals, you should be happy with this, just in the sense of you're going to see Albert and Cardinal Red again. And if you're a fan of the game, I mean, you talk about the, one of the best right-handed hitters of all time, especially at his peak, 2001 to 2011. That 10-year stretch will likely remain unmatched for a very long time. Yes, I'm sure Trout and Bonds will have their say. But that stretch was just remarkable. And now, after 10 years... After he signed a 10-year mega contract with the Los Angeles Angels, after he signed a short one-year deal with the Los Angeles Dodgers, he's coming home. The machine is coming home. There is no better way to script this. There's, if you sold this to Hollywood, they might not believe you because Albert being back is good on a lot of different levels. But then you, you throw in one last ride with arguably three of the most recognizable Cardinals of the last two decades. Yanni Molina and Adam Wainwright. Those two have said this is it. They're calling it after this year. One more ride, here we go. Albert will likely do the same. He's 41, maybe 42, I forget. Looking it up now. Nevertheless, Three of the most recognizable Cardinals of the last two decades and three of the best Cardinals of all time 
Some might say at least one of these people are on the St. is on the St. Louis Cardinals Mount Rushmore. We'll have one last chance to chase a ring or at least go out together. They came in together. It only makes sense. Yes, Wayne Wright was drafted by the Atlanta Braves and things of that nature, but they made their names together. They made their they got all their milestones together. In the last 10 years, it's been great having Wainwright and Molina kind of take on what Albert did in terms of being the faces of the franchise. And now it's time for those three to do it again. I mentioned some milestones. Albert is only 21 home runs away from 700 on his career. That is a ridiculous milestone that not a lot of players get the opportunity to reach. Last season, he hit 17. Is it going to be easy? No. But it wouldn't have, it just wouldn't have felt right watching Albert chase after those milestones in anything but Cardinal Red. Some might have thought that we've seen the last Albert Pujols home run in Bush Stadium. Some might have thought we've seen the last Albert Pujols home run as a Cardinal. And yes, those things could be true if injury, God forbid, something. Yes, I understand that. But Albert Pujols coming back doesn't make baseball sense. Does this improve the team enough? We'll have that discussion. However, what I do know is that it's going to be glorious, whether you're a Cardinal fan or otherwise, to see Albert in Cardinal red again with the birds on the bat, He'll probably be wearing number five if I had to throw out just an educated guess. But holy, I mean, this is a move that is going to excite the fan base. Can you you imagine the uproar on opening day? Because, yeah, he got a huge one when he returned to St. Louis for the first time in 2019 when he came back with the Angels. Yes, he got a large one when he came back with the Los Angeles Dodgers last September. And yes, now it's like, okay, third time in three years. What is there to cheer about? Well, how about the fact that he's not only back in Bush Stadium, but he's back in Bush Stadium in Cardinal Red playing for the St. Louis Cardinals. The nostalgia part of me is ecstatic with this move. I grew up on Albert Pujols. My first memories of baseball are on Albert Pujols. So yeah, there are certain times in this industry where you try to where you try to have to separate your fandom versus who you're covering versus how you're watching, what moves you think they should make. I take the fandom out of it. Totally agree. Try to do that. This move is not the worst baseball move, so we can make that work. But I'd be lying if I said that the fan part of me wasn't thrilled right now. He's one of the greatest right-handed hitters of his generation. Arguably the best, and one of the best ever. And he's coming back to St. Louis to finish it where it started as a 21-year-old in 2001, right before the Cardinals started their century of success to date. I hope, I hope that he gets a chance to get 700 home runs. Because he hit some big, he got some big milestones in in the uh, Los Angeles Angels organization. 500, 600, past Willie Mays, RBIs, 3,000 hits came with the Angels. So yeah, he was in red. That's nice. But it's time for him to chase some milestones in St. Louis. It is. He'll have one last shot at it. One year, $2.5 million. Once again, to wrap up this first segment, the nostalgia part of me is thrilled to have him back. The fan side of me is thrilled to have him back. There's no question about it that this is a good move from that perspective. And sometimes that's the only perspective you need, sometimes. But there is still the game to be played. And he is not the Albert Pujols of 2007 or 2008. He's not even the Albert Pujols of even 2015. We saw some good things from him in 2021 from afar. Now it's time to start talking about what he can do for the St. Louis Cardinals. How does this turn into a successful move 
beyond the emotional uproar, the positive emotional uproar that we've seen the last 12, 13 hours. So we'll talk about the baseball sense of the move coming up here in just a moment. But first, I want to tell you guys a little bit more about our title sponsor, and that is Bet Online, because it is that time of year. College basketball tournament is in full swing. Final four coming up this weekend. Bet Online has you covered. It's your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info for all the latest odds, contests, and players, props, you name it. Bet Online remains the best spot for all of your latest sports developments, including podcasts and reviews for all the leagues of this season. And it's not just basketball. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sport wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. Baseball sense of the move. $2.5 million is the reported salary from Mark Feisnand, as well as others confirming that report. Hopefully it's confirmed within the next couple of hours. Um, and He'll be reporting a little bit later this week. And, oh, boy, Cardinal Twitter is going to go insane. That first shot of him back in the Cardinal red. That's all I'm saying. It, 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 I, I, I keep saying it. Because of how really, like, if you really think about it, how legit wonderful it is to have Albert back in St. Louis. I know I just finished up the nostalgia part and everything of that nature, but holy cow, it's nice. All right, baseball sense. Dollars and cents, $2.5 million, great. You know, he obviously wasn't going to get the $20 million or 17 whatever he was getting last year, the double-digit million. Uh, that, that obviously was not going to happen. So Albert Pujols on a $2.5 million deal one year, that, that's a pretty good contract. That, 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 that really is. Because he is somebody that, that the upside is tremendous. Gets some milestones, helps you win some games, DH option. So for $2.5 million, that's pretty solid. He's, he, yes, he's 42. He just turned 42 in January. So again, if you're taking a look at just the baseball card, which I, I talk about a lot, talked about it a lot with Yadier Molina and Andrew Kisner last year in that debate, if you're looking at just the baseball numbers, at the age, what he put up last year, what he's projected to put up this year, okay, I get the frustration with the move. But there are multiple perspectives to this. Albert coming back is not just what you're getting on the baseball field. It's the 20-plus years of baseball experience. It's the 20-plus years of winning experience that he can help mold these young guys. He can walk with, you know, the Juan Yepes of the world, the younger guys in this, in this roster, on this roster, in this organization, and help mold them. He can be a little bit more of a teacher. He really, and it's not just going to be a teaching role, right? Like he is going to do, um, obviously some production, but that is another bonus of this move. So we're talking about the baseball sense. The positive is he is going to be able to help mold these young guys and to use his experience, not only just in general baseball, but also how to find success in St. Louis. I mean, you, you talk about finding success in St. Louis. Albert did it. Two-time World Series champion, three-time MVP, two-time gold glove. Ten-year run that is unmatched. Remarkable. It really, really is. So, so where is he going to play? Right. It's obviously going to be the DH. I think it would be kind of fun if Albert got the start at first on opening day. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to look more into the rule and start Goldschmidt at DH. But maybe you start him at first just to get him a start at first base and then you switch them. I don't know if that's actually allowed. I'd have to look more into that rule. But he'll play DH, right? And he's going to be a platoon bat, in my opinion. And from the reports that I've seen, and based on what he did last year. And again, he's 42, like I mentioned. So I get the, the hesitancy. But there are some pictures that Hector Gomez has tweeted out. of him taking batting practice with Edwin Encarnacion. He looks great for 42. 
And again, it's not like we're going to expect him to play 150, 160 games. And at all of them at first, like he's, he's probably going to see very limited time at first base, just to be frank. He can do it, don't get me wrong. Do it for a game or two, give Goldie a day off. But he, he'll be hitting primarily against left-handed pitching. And now you have a pretty good platoon option between Albert Pujols and Corey Dickerson if Dickerson ends up getting the first base or the uh, starting DH job. Because these were his splits last year, Albert Pujols, the entirety of last year. In 71 games against right-handed pitching, 150 plate appearances, 139 at-bats. He hit 180, had an on-base of 233, slugged 266 for an OPS of 500. In 72 games against left-handed pitching, but... 146 plate appearances and 136 at bats. He hit 294, had an on base of 336, and slugged 603 for an OPS of 939. 13 home runs, throwing three doubles. 13 of his 17 home runs came against left handed pitching. That is, that, 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 that's remarkable. And I know that I said and have talked about a lot the, the over right handedness of this lineup and how the Cardinals needs, uh, would need a good left-handed bat. But what this does in signing an Albert Pujols is, yes, the baseball sense of it, okay? Use that word a lot today. He's going to be DH, right? That allows you to have Corey Dickerson off the bench full-time, or not full-time, against left-handed pitching and have a left-handed bat off the bench. Not a ton of pop, maybe, but a left-handed bat off the bench that you can go to for a reliable hit. It allows you to put Lars Newtbar on the bench full-time and have... A solid option coming off the bench from the left side as well. So Albert is going to see it some playing time. He might not. He might even get some extra playing time at home games just to get the fans in on something or something. But like I said, no matter who's the opening day starter for the Pittsburgh Pirates in a week, you know, little under two weeks, week and a half since some change. I don't care if it's right or left. Albert should start on opening day especially since opening day this year is at Bush Stadium. That needs that that needs to happen. Period. Plain and simple period. So DH maybe a little bit of first to give Goldschmidt a, a day off, but you keep Goldie's bat in the lineup by hitting him in the DH slot. So he, again, when you talk about chasing milestones, 21 home runs is not going to be an easy feat, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. But I do think it's doable. And at the end, at the end of the day, he, he is going to be re-energized. He's back in St. Louis. He's playing with his good buddies, Adam Wainwright and Yadier Molina again. It's a really solid team with playoff hopes, even World Series hopes, if everything goes according to plan, which we know it won't. Some things will, some things won't. But you still have hope. You know, you, you knew what was going to happen with the Angels. You knew they weren't going to become a playoff team. I think he went to one playoff series in 10 years there, and they got swept by the, by the Royals or Orioles. I think it was the Royals, 2015, when the Royals won the World Series. Mid the playoffs last year at the Dodgers, but that's why he went to L.A. at the time of his release and when he was looking to sign a new contract. They were the, the clear playoff favorites. He got to stay in L.A. for a little bit longer. But now, it's, it's, it's re-energized, right? He's able to, like I said, play with his good friends, Yadier Molina and Adam Wainwright. I can't remember if I mentioned this yet, but Hector Gomez mentioning that Yadier Molina played a huge role in bringing back Adam Wainwright, or excuse me, bringing back Albert Pujols. So his playing time is not going to be a lot. Like, like this, this might go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways. And I've already said it. We, it's not going to be an expectation of him to play 150, 160 games. It's just not. He might go a little bit of time without playing. But again, that's where the, the teaching aspect comes in. He can mold these young players. He can be, um, he, he can just be an extra, an extra coach almost at times. And the, the, the final question I'll kind of talk about, and when you're talking about the baseball sense, is who is he blocking? Because any time an addition is made to a team, someone's getting blocked. Someone, someone else's playing time is reduced. And in this case, it's a combination of guys, right? 
It is an absolute combination of a Juan Yepes, maybe even a large Newt Bar, a Nolan Gorman. So at what point do we say, okay, these guys are getting blocked at the major league level right now, but they are raking at the minor leagues. And Albert's not cutting it, you know. I'm not saying Albert's going to get released, but that's kind of the, the final talking point I wanted to, to get to on today's show. You know, the last two segments really going more into the baseball sense of things. So we'll talk about those couple things coming up here in just a moment. But first, I do want to tell you guys about the best tasting protein bar in all of the business, and that is Built Bar. Built Bar is the candy bar that tastes like a protein bar, and they even have incredible products like a puff. Puffs are the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar. They are a treat. They're covered 100% in real chocolate, just like Built Bars. 100% real chocolate, but they're still low-calorie, high-protein. You can replace your candy bar with these because they're healthier and they taste better. A typical candy bar can be anywhere from two to 300 calories. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories. Also, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. With flavors to choose from, like mint brownie, coconut, or coconut almond, why would you go anywhere else for your protein? At Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first, and then figure out how to make it healthy, and they pull it off every single time. Go to Built.com right now. Use promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, to get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, for 15% off at Built.com. With Albert coming back, the nostalgia is great. The fan in me is great. The emotional side in me is great. But there's another side to it. The baseball side. That's what we've been talking about for a little bit, right? Who, who is Albert Pujols blocking? Because it's likely going to be a platoon situation on the DH spot between Corey Dickerson against right-handed pitching and Albert Pujols against left-handed pitching, which is you, you could go a lot of worse ways at your DH, just saying that right now. But I will say, who, who else was competing? Who have we been talking about this offseason, right, for the DH? Lars Newtbar, Nolan, Nolan Gorman, Juan Yepes. With the latter, and Yepes, he is somebody that saw a little bit of roster time in the wild card game, but also somebody that has not impressed this spring. Oliver, Ali Marmol talked about that a little bit, how he hasn't really performed like they liked him to. He's carried himself well, as Marmol put it, but has not really performed to the way that, that, that they expected. So then you start thinking, okay, the other, the two other DH options are left-handed. Do we want a right-handed option? And once Albert Pujols' name came around, I know the Rays showed some interest. I know the Rockies showed some interest. I think the Mariners even showed some interest. When Albert's name got thrown around, and you know, I, I think that this became a no-brainer type of move because you have all of the nostalgia in the world, all of the. The emotion side of this move makes a ton of sense. And then you throw in just a little bit of baseball sense. And the deal works out. And again, I talked about on this show a lot how it doesn't, it, it doesn't make baseball sense. And I still think that there's an argument to that. And I'm not trying to backtrack what I said. But I think with the way the offseason has turned out, like if the Cardinals would have signed Trevor Story, then is there a need to get Albert? No, probably not, right? If they would have made another right-handed addition, is there a, a need for Albert? No, probably not, right? But because there was no other real offensive additions added besides Corey Dickerson, a right-handed bat became a little bit of, of, of a necessity, and especially once it was Albert. So anyways, Juan Yepes is getting blocked. Nolan Gorman likely will now start the year at Memphis with, with no major league time available to him. Lars Newbar is probably going to be the fourth outfielder, fifth outfielder with Dickerson, but fourth outfielder and an option off the bench. The bench is probably going to be now, uh, let, let's just say a lefties on the mound, right? Or opening day, opening day bench, put it that way. Will likely be Kisner, Sosa, Newtbar, Dickerson. You know, maybe, maybe you throw in another uh, infielder like Brendan Donovan or something of that nature. I don't know. But th th those four will definitely be there. So it, let, let, let's just throw out a, a, a 
hypothetical. And this might be a hypothetical you don't want to hear right now because you're positive, you're happy about Albert, but let, let's just talk about it anyways. You have, let's just say you have Albert struggle. He's 42, age catches up with him. Let's just say he struggles, okay? At what point do you have to say to yourself, and I talked about this a little bit before the break, okay, you struggled, and Juan Yepes is raking in the minor leagues. Or let's just, let, let's even add another layer to this. Let's say both Dickerson and Albert struggle at the DH, and you have both Yepes and Gorman raking at the minor league level. I don't think, I, it, it's going to take a lot for the Cardinals to release Albert Pujols prematurely. A lot. But that is a, a scenario in your head that you have to think about. Because what if he is the, the weak link in the lineup? And you do have to make a baseball move, a hard move. A move that might not be super popular, but that is necessary to improve the team going forward. That could be a realistic possibility. It could be. I, and I don't know the answer to this question. I don't know the answer to what point do you have to say, okay, Albert, this was great, but we got to worry about baseball now. Because I don't think it's going to happen. Albert Pools is a class professional, class A professional. Been doing it a long time. We saw him get rejuvenated last year with the Dodgers. And that wasn't even St. Louis. You didn't have Albert, or you didn't have Yachty Wainwright re energizing him. You just had a playoff opportunity and a change of scenery. Well, this is a change of scenery back to something that he already knows he has success in. Back to Yadier Molina, back to Adam Wainwright. To end out his career, they can go out together. And again, it is only fitting that they go out together. So we, we, we've talked baseball since. Not trying to bring everybody down, because I know this is a fun move. It's an exciting move from a fan base perspective. But we, do, we did need to talk about, did this move make baseball sense? And I said verbatim on this show that it probably wouldn't. And then the offseason went the way it did. Does this move make this offseason a win? Oh boy, oh boy, there's an argument for that. You improved the starting rotation with Steven Matz. You added bullpen depth with Verhagen and Whitgren, a couple other minor league guys. You improved the offense at least minimally with Corey Dickerson and Albert Pujols. That's a pretty solid offseason. Are they done? I don't know. Maybe they go after a Manai or a Montes like I talked about last week. They could not be done. But holy cow, does this move make this offseason a heck of a lot better. I'm not saying it makes it an A or A-. minus. It might just make it a B or a B B+. But this move is, is one that, that it, if it is the last move that they make this offseason, I know that the season's technically started with spring training, but before opening day is my main point, then it's one hell of a move and one hell of a show-stopping move if you really think about it. So we'll see um, when we get to see Albert. Hopefully it's this week. That's what the reports have been. I also think it's fitting that this move came on the eve of Yadier Molina's return to spring training. And who is he catching today? Adam Wainwright. Isn't that just fitting? Doesn't that just make sense to you guys? Makes sense to me. I, I, I'm a fan of these little coincidences. Uh, you know, I would even venture to not call them coincidences, just to call them weird sports things. <laughs> weird sports thing today is that Albert Pujols, after 10 years, is coming back to the St. Louis Cardinals on the same day or the eve of the day that uh, Yadier Molina makes his spring training debut against or catching Adam Wainwright. Butchered the saying, but you guys know what I'm saying. You guys know what I'm trying to get to. Happy, I mean, the machine is back. At the end of the day, that, 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 that's, that, that's what my head's at. That, that's where I'm at. Our Pujols is back. And just, just for a day even. I know I spent most of this episode, or at least a good portion of it, talking about the baseball sense, how he's going to play. But I think I did that in a positive light. And we, we can talk about the negative light. We, we really can. We, we, can be, we can take a pessimistic look. But even just for a day, let's just be happy and rejoice in the fact that Albert Pujols is once again coming home to St. Louis. For one last year, one last ride with Adam Wainwright and Yadier Molina. Just one, that, that sentence is one that I never thought I would say. But boy, I am happy that I am saying it. That's going to do it for today's episode. Again, I'm traveling this week. I'm in, if breaking news happens, we're going to do the same thing we did today. I'll get an episode out on YouTube. It'll just be a blank screen or be a locked on Cardinal screen with my voiceover so you guys can watch it as well. 
Uh, but tomorrow and the next couple of days, it'll be crossover days with Paul Holden and Jeff Carr and myself. So uh, be sure to tune back in for those. Um, again, if breaking news happens, you know I'll be on it. Um, I'm on spring break, but baseball doesn't stop. So uh, thanks for bearing with me as I got this episode out. Um, Albert Pujols is back, ladies and gentlemen. Albert Pujols is back. So until I talk to you guys next time, be sure to stay safe, stay well, and have a fantastic rest of your day. 